if thou seekest her as silver. And I had one of my friends, Andrew Boxes, back here. So, yes, I came back after the pandemic, but I also prayed to the Lord. I said, if you sustain me, struggles you I love about Pastor Wayne is that he never lost focus. <laughs> saints and I'm in the house of God and and, and, and you know I, I don't like it to be quiet that's just my preference you know what I mean because God has done so much you know what I mean and I, I don't mean he's done so much just because of our 18 years but if we wouldn't have had one day we would have never had 18 years so so I'm just going to tell you this because we didn't do the history I'm just going to say this right quick for those of you who don't know this is, was not, this was not a church that just came in my mind and say, oh, let's do this. This started from a Bible study at B&B Hardware where I worked, where Brother Baltz back there works. And it all started because he started asking me questions about, you know, he was having a hard time dealing with his dad. His dad had passed away. So he started sneaking around asking me questions. Amen. We would be back there hanging out and I would be trying to answer his questions to help him get through the passing of his father. Amen. So after that, let's have a Bible study. Amen. So we asked the people who owned the place, you know, they was in the Jewish descent, you know, and uh, we talked to her about it. And, oh, sure. You guys can do that. So we started having Bible study Amen. every week. And you know, the cold thing about it is, it was in an upper room. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. It was in an upper room. Whoever was there, no, I ain't lying. We had to go up them steps to the upper room. And even though she was from Jewish descent, she would keep her door wide open. Because she was working, but she was listening. Amen? And we had a good time up in there. So out of that, we did that for maybe about three years, maybe somewhere around there. Then people started saying, hey, what's stopping us from, you know, having the church? And I said, well, you pray about that. I'm not in charge of that kind of stuff. You guys pray about that. And if that's God's will, then we will move. I said, one thing I do know is when God is telling me to do something, I will do it even if you don't. I will do that. You don't have to do it for me. I'll do it myself. You know how I know? Just last Wednesday, I had to help somebody move by myself. And that person is in here right now, and they know I ain't lying. <laughs> hey, man. I'm, I'm paying the price right now for that, though. My knees are hurting. Hey, man. They're hurting, but I did it in love. <laughs> hey, man. See, when you do it in love, you just got to deal with the consequences. You know? But I thank God because out of the Bible study came God's house of liberty. After they prayed and after they do this, and so I started praying. And I mean, I'm praying all the time. I'm at work praying. Lord, what do you want me to do? Where is this Bible study going? All of a sudden, maybe about a year, 
We was coming up on like almost like four years of being up in there, having Bible study and everything else. I think it was 2004. God had me looking. I went to that gym over there. He had me. I would go past it because I stayed over there on Watsika at the time. And I would go past it every night and every morning going to work. And I started looking over there for some reason. I ain't never been looking at that place. I just started looking over there. Every time I drive by, I couldn't help but look. Y'all know that water fountain over there that be springing up? Anybody know the area? Okay, it's a big old glass room right there called the Rotunda Room. Yes, yes. That's where I bet you. Yeah. That's where I Bam! That's right. <laughs> hey, man. So we went, I went in there and I asked questions with the people and everything, and then it went so smooth. See, let me tell you something. Everything that God has for you or wants you to do is not always hard. It's not always difficult. God will make that way smooth. You know how I know? Because God don't want you to struggle too much because he knows we get discouraged quickly. So God will make it smooth. So that transition and that conversation with them over there at the park went smooth to where I couldn't help but say, okay. So I went back to the Bible study. I told them what was going on. And you know what? Didn't nobody give me a dime. Didn't nobody give me no money to sow into that before, I, before we went over there. The blessing was God had B&B paying me every week. Woo, every week. Let me tell you something. I was never broke. Those Tuesdays came quick, if anybody here know what I'm talking about. Bam, bam. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Them Tuesdays was coming quick. I start paying that myself. I start coming out of my pocket. Making sure. At that time, I was paying it every week. I couldn't afford to pay every month. So I start paying every week. Amen. And we hung in there. You know what we did miss a day? Listen to me. If you allow God to hitch himself to you, I'm going to put it like that. See, if you allow God to hitch himself to you, you know why I say that? Because we mess around and we won't do the opposite. We won't hitch ourselves to God. So if you allow God to hitch himself to you, God will bless you. God will take care of you. God will be in your life for real. And you won't miss nothing. I'm saying this because, see, this is a celebration. I don't know what y'all doing up in here. But, see, I'm celebrating the 18 years. A lot of people who've been in some of them seats where you are right now are going on to glory. And the ones that have and some of the ones who haven't went on to glory just left. Some of them have left and came back. Hallelujah. So I just wanted to say that because that's where we come from. It's not always being what you see. And I'm going to say this on behalf of our dearly departed brother, Clifford Featherstone. Okay. One of the greatest deacons we've ever had up in here. Amen. He was my ride or die up in here in this ministry. He's gone. But let me tell you something what he said. I remember when we didn't have a band. Amen. Somebody, oh man, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Y'all act like y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Clifford used to stand up here, amen, witnesses. He used to stand up here, boy, and after a while he say, look, I remember when we didn't even have a band. Yeah. Yeah. Now they blow the windows off. <laughs> amen. And I'm just saying what happened between the first day and 18 years later. God is good, people. And I don't mean that he's just, you know, good as a cliche. God is awesome. 
You can't beat him giving. You know how we sing that song? You know, but we sing it messed up. <laughs> Y'all know that often song? You can't be God giving. You know, singing it like that, all drab and all that kind of stuff like that. I don't mean that kind. <laughs> You got to come up to date. You got to, you got to move on, come on, come on when you start understanding what God has done. Yes. Okay? You got to start being grateful. Yes. Just like we were singing an offering song today, hey, I always be yes. thankful. I always be grateful. You got to get to the point to where it means something to you. Yes. That's what it's all about. Don't serve God as your, at your leisure. You better serve God with everything you got. Everything. Everything. If you want to get someplace, how many people here really want to get somewhere with God? Raise your hand. If you really want to get someplace, if you really want to go someplace, if you really want God to bless you in some things, and you know only he can do it, let me tell you something. People that you know can't get you there. Do you want me to tell you that again? The people that you know cannot get you there. Only God can get you there. And that's it. God has brought us for 18 years. Amen. And that is a blessing and a glory to God. Real quick, I just want to keep your minds and get on this. God blessed you. See, because sometimes we forget about that. We forget all about how blessed we really are. We forget all about who the blesser is. See, you, will, you don't have to go through all that heartache and pain if you just look to God to take care of you. Instead of looking to mankind. Mankind ain't got nothing good for you. Amen. You need God. How many children of God up in here right now? Amen. Well, why are you asking me for help? Oh, golly. Come on. Mm. Come on, y'all. Y'all need to have a smile on your face. If you can't have fun at church, then you need to get out. You need to get to get. Amen. Amen. I got I to gotta enjoy myself at church. You know what I'm saying? I already know. Hey, and you know what? I enjoy myself when somebody hit me with a baseball bat. Okay. Okay. Not a physical bat, y'all. Not a physical baseball bat. But when they're hitting me upside the head with the word of God, when they got the word of God and they pow, they tagging me. You know what? I enjoy that. You know why? Because it keeps me where I need to be. It keeps me right there and it lets you know that, hey, you ain't nobody without him. So the word of God keeps us in our right lanes. It keeps us in that right vein. And that's where we all need to be. You can't do nothing without God. You don't believe me? Get real sick and see. Get real sick. Or let the doctors give you some bad news. You can't do nothing without God. You know what I'm saying? So we might as well practice that before we get to where we could possibly be. So when we get there, we ready. We filled up. Amen? Remember, God blessed you. Go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy Chapter 28. You need to understand that you ain't no, you ain't no nobody. You're not a wimp. You know, you need to start using what's at your disposal. And not only that, you need to start acting like you know somebody. The one thing I do not like, and I haven't liked it for years, probably decades now, you know, is a weak Christian. Is a weak child of God. Don't tell me you're a child of God and you're weak. 
because you have no reason to be weak as a child of God. See, sometimes we don't pay attention to what we're saying out of our mouth. If you're telling somebody that you are a child of God, do you know who God is? You're just saying you're a child of God, but every time I see you, you got your hand out. Every time I see, see you, you're having a pity party. See, a child of God, I understand we are down at certain times. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you ain't going to never be down. But what I'm saying is you need to be up more than down. That's what I'm saying. You need to be up more than being down. And that's the blessing. Why? Because God has blessed you. Quit walking around here with your head hung down. For what? Ain't nothing down there. You act like where you going is down here. So when you're walking, you're walking down here. And you ask him about what you're doing. Oh, I'm looking to see if somebody drops some money. Man, stop all that. <laughs> we need to stop all that. Ain't nobody dropping money these days like that. What you looking down there for? As a child of God, we need to have our head up. Amen? I don't care if you're fighting. You better have your head up and you better drink water with one hand. With your head up and your, and your hand on your weapon. That's what you better like. And have your hand on your weapon. Hey Amen. If you're a child of God, if you are who you say you are, then you have to be ready. Amen. Because God already done equipped you. You just don't use it. Woo, let me get on with this. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask that you would bless your word, Almighty God. We thank you, Almighty God, for bringing us together. We ask, Almighty God, that you will anoint our ears to hear the truth, anoint our hearts to accept your truth. Lord, we thank you, we glorify you, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand, praise. God blessed you. Are we there? Deuteronomy. Chapter 28. Starting with the first verse. Pay close attention, people. And all you're getting, get an understanding. If you don't understand it when you hear it once, go over it again. Go over it again. Line upon line. You know how it go. That's what you do. Okay? Study. Get into the word of God. Amen? Verse 1 says as follows. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of thy God. Hold it. Now we know, I know a lot of people say, oh, well, you did Old Testament stuff and this and that and that and this, that and this. Let me tell you something. Jesus is in the Old Testament. Just in case if you forgot something, you know what I'm saying? Because when you look at the word of God, the word of God is Jesus. So you can't separate them because Jesus is the word and the word is Jesus. Amen. And the word in Jesus is God. So come on, people. We need to quit playing games with the word and take the word for who he is. Not what it is, who he is. We got to start living this life right. Stop calling yourself a child of God if you're not going to live like one. I said it. Go tell on me. I don't care. (laughs) Go tell. It don't matter. The truth is, is what God says it is. So we see right there, if we do what God tells us to do, 
will be blessed above everybody. I'm just going to put it like that. It says all nations, but I'm going to say everybody. And don't think that you got to have a million dollars to be blessed. Get out of that mindset thinking that God is only a God that cares about money. Money don't do anybody any good if they on that sick bed. Money doesn't do you any good if your marriage is falling apart. If your kids is running crazy, money ain't going to stop them. So start realizing as a child of God who God is. Stop treating God like he ain't nobody. Stop running to people and run to God. Just do what the word says. And too far hand and all these blessings shall come on thee. Who don't want to be blessed? And this says all these blessings. What blessings? Not only that, well, we're going to see some of them in a minute. Amen. Verse 3. Blessed shalt thou be in the city. And blessed shalt thou be in the field. See, we get that and we get to singing that song right there. As soon as, soon as you hear them words, oh, you, you, you singing that song. Amen. Blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Yeah. See, that, that comes to mind, don't it? But that's where they got that from. They got that from the word. Amen. It ain't somebody sat down and all of a sudden just came up with a bright idea. No, that's God's thing. Amen. But it says that you are blessed. Where? Blessed when you're out there in the city. Blessed when you're out there messing around. Blessed whenever you go. Okay? You're blessed. And guess what? When you come back home, you're blessed. Why? First of all, because you got a home to come back to. So you blessed. You know, there's a lot of people don't have a home to come back to. So if you, after you leave here tonight, if you're able to get your key out and go in your house, you bless. And if you have peace in your house, woo, you double blessed. Boy, I'm telling you. If you could turn the key to your house and get in there for it, shut that door, and all of a sudden, whew, That's right. That's right. It's just... Oh, man, it's good in here. Man. If you can go in your house and do that and feel at peace, go to the refrigerator, eat whatever you want to eat, whatever it is, you can go in there and, and take a bath without waiting on somebody before you to come in there. and so, so, I mean, look here, man, you blessed. If you got quietness in your house, not a whole bunch of noise, you blessed. You're blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. God blessed you. Amen. Verse 4 says, Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and flocks of sheep. Now I take that and say, okay, I put that in food for me. I don't have no sheep. I don't have no, no flocks to be messing with. I don't have no cattle. I don't have none of that. I got grocery store. I don't know if anybody agree with me on that. But uh, I just wanted to say it that way so you understand, you know, because some people try to nitpick on you. So I'm trying to let you understand what it says for us today. We go to the grocery store. Amen. Amen. We don't have to do what, what Jay just said right there in the word. We don't have to do that right there like that. Amen. We, we, we got money and we go to the store. We buy it. Already cut. Already cut. Already plucked. All we got to do is buy it. Bake it. Fry it. And we're blessed if we're able to do that. Amen. So if you're able to do that as a child of God, you're blessed. Amen. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Verse 5 says, Blessed shall be thy 
basket in thy store. Okay, you know what? I, I just preached on something about what's in your basket a couple of weeks back. And I'm here to tell you, it depends on what you put in your basket is what you're going to get out your basket. So if you putting in some mess, lies, deception, you know what I'm saying, all that kind of stuff, trickery. If you're putting all that stuff in your basket, guess what? When you go stick your hand in there to get something out of it, that's what you're going to get. Why? Because that's what you put in the basket. So make sure that you put the good stuff in the basket. Make sure that whatever God gives you and bless you with, you put that in the basket. So when you do go to the basket, and that, I'm just saying that because that's what this says. Okay? Blessed shall be thy basket shall be your basket. Your basket will be blessed. But the only way it's going to be blessed if you allow God's things to get in it. Amen. That's it. Verse 6 says, Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Now, we just said that because it says something similar to that up there. Amen? So when you go out, you're blessed. When you come back, you're blessed. So wherever you go is what God is saying. You know, sometimes you might still want to go to the club. Hey Amen. I mean, you ain't beyond that. Hey Amen. There's a whole bunch of quote unquote people that call themselves a Christian. And they be going to the club throwing down. You know why? Because they figure Christ ain't in the club. Come on with me. <laughs> they act like Christ stop at the door. Christ outside waiting. Hey, look, I ain't old enough to go in the club, so I'm going to wait outside because they ID me and I can't get in. And you act like you're going to leave Christ outside. It don't work like that. Wherever you go, he go. So whatever environment you in, he in. You can't get away from him. No matter how bad you try. And I'm glad I can't get rid of him. Amen. Amen. God blessed you. Just remember he blessed you. Verse 7. And I'm done. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Hallelujah! I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Do you hear what he's saying? Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid for what people can do to you? <laughs> somebody, you got somebody come up in your face or something like that, you run like, like he the boogeyman. <laughs> it don't matter who the person is. Everybody can be chopped down. It don't matter. It don't matter how big you are. What did David do? See, if you know your Bible heroes, then that should encourage you. You should realize, hey, wait a minute. Goliath was huge. He was huge and mighty. And all the, all the other Israelites were scared to death. Hmm. Even King Saul. They all scared. Here come little old David. He went looking around and picked out some stones. Y'all know that, don't you? He picked out some stones. But not just any stones, was it? Some smooth stones with no edges. He picked out some smooth stones because he wanted to make sure when, when, when it hit, it hit good. He could swing it good because that's what he did. He was killing things before Goliath came along. Amen. So he had practice. Yeah. See, you can kill some things right. if you practice. <laughs> Woo! Let me tell you something. You got to be a slayer. My Lord. Come on, come on, come on. 
You got to be a slayer for the Lord. You talking about, yeah, I'm in the Lord's army. Well, how can I tell? Because I'm looking for your, for, for your armor. I don't see nothing. You talk like you used to talk. You walk like you used to talk. You smell like you used to smell. You hang around the people that, that you used to hang around. You still hanging around. How can I tell? You ain't put on no armor. I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing but the same old person doing the same old thing, looking the same old way. And you trying to tell me that God has changed you. Let me tell you something. God blessed you. So start acting like you're blessed from God. Start acting like it. I want to say this one more time just for our hearing. Come on, people. Verse 7 says, the Lord shall cause. The Lord will do this, not you. Right. See, look, this is what I like about God. God takes you out of the picture. You know why? Because he can't trust you. When God is trying to bless you, bless you, he can't trust you. That's why he does things like this. And this is not the only place where you can see God does certain things for us and he don't allow us to touch nothing. Because he don't trust us. He knows us. And he don't want us to think that it's because of what we did. He wants us to understand this is what he does. The Lord will cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten, to be beat up, to be toned down, to be annihilated, to be smitten before thy face. You know what I like about God? He'll do it right there in front of you. Oh, man, come on now. You know what? Right there was a shouting moment, but I hear you. Because sometimes, sometimes, we, sometimes we miss it. Sometimes we miss the good stuff. Amen. Sometimes we miss the good stuff. See, that, that was a good place. See, I understand. Wait a minute, God, you mean to tell me that you're going to do what? See, listen to this again. This is what God said he will do. It ain't got nothing to do with you. So you ought to be happy about it that God is willing to work on your behalf. We should be working for him, but he's always working for us. The Lord shall cause thine enemies, your enemies, not God's, not God's enemies, yours, your enemies. Sometimes you got enemies on your job. Sometimes you got enemies in your home. Sometimes you can be having a good day and the enemy just pop up out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, you having a good day. Then all of a sudden, here come this knucklehead or here come this fool. Here come this person who just coming out of nowhere and just trying to cut me to the quick. For nothing. For nothing. But God said this. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. I love it when God put people down in front of me. I love it because that just makes my praise go up even more so. When God does something and I see him do it, whoo, my faith gets big. See, your faith has to get bigger. If you're still playing with that little measure of faith that you got at the beginning of believing, something wrong with you. You need to be able to make your faith grow. That little measure that everybody did, you ain't nobody special. God gave every believer that little measure of faith. Now you got to exercise it. Now it comes into your faith uh, process with God. 
So when God says that he'll do something like this, the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up. See, they rising up against you. They don't mean you no good. That will rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. You will see what God will do. Then it says, come on, come on. they shall come out against thee one way. So here they come. They coming for you. You can see them coming for you. You don't need to know what kind of weapons they got. But here they come, and you can see them coming. Amen? So they're coming at you, but guess what? They're coming at you one way. Come on, say, you hear what God is saying? God is saying, hey, look, what they doing ain't nothing because they can only come at you one way. They coming at you one way. And then it says, after you know that they're coming at you one way and flee before the seven way. God said, look, if they come at you, I will make them leave you seven ways. That means I will get rid of them. They got to go. He'll, he will scatter that group away from you. That's what God will do. That's what he does. And he does it for you. It ain't nothing. Everything I read, ain't nothing you had to do. Right? There is not anything that you had to do but stand and be that child of God. That's all you had to do. Don't you understand how good he is to you? You need to understand that, hey, all you got to do is do your part. And your part is to do what God said. See, because if you do what God said, you won't be in error. You won't be confused. You won't be mixed up. So when somebody is trying to tell you something that ain't Bible, you know it ain't Bible. Like I told you before, if I would have listened to anybody before these 18 years, we wouldn't be here. Like I told you, I was coming out of my pocket to make sure that we was having church, church every Sunday. We was having prayer meetings through the week. And when I was making those weekly payments, like I told you, I can only make them because of God. God. God blessed me. God blessed you. Now, who wants to be, let me tell you something. Who want to be blessed? Stand on your feet. Give God a hand praise to be blessed. Huh? You need to be blessed. 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 Hallelujah. That's what it's all about. Give it to God. He'll take care of everything. Hallelujah.